Sub shooters, my name is Logan aka Spider Hands, and welcome to an SU Patrons video today that I'm making for uh, Ghost as part of their custom monthly music review and this is of a track from an act named Gen Neo and Faye titled uh, Will You and if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on YouTube and we're going to listen through it from start to finish and hear what we think. Let's go, let's do it. We also have lyrics provided by Ghost which is fantastic, thank you very much. Oh, some vocal chops or some synths or some somber piano lines. Oh, okay, we're not getting some resolution with that harmony, that's fine. So this is Faye. She's a great vocalist. There's a softness in it and a really... Really great timbre to it. Yeah, now we got that modern production with those sort of vocal harmonies and uh, that little build there, that crescendo of the background elements there. Uh, handing over to Jen Neo, I suppose. Oh, that's a fresh tone to those basses. Okay, so there's a little bit of distortion on that vocal preamp there and that recording take. I can hear that. I'm not sure if that's him simply messing around with a little bit of vocal distortion or compression on that build there. But yeah, it's still fine. I'm still really enjoying listening to it. Are the zoom in to be like, is it meant to be like an actual symbolic reason that his sort of motif behind Gen Neo's vocals is different to Faye's with a much more softer tone and more space and heavy reverb parts? There's a great unison and chemistry between these two musicians there. They sound very comfortable with each other and they the voices niche well together and amalgamate uh, effortlessly. I'm liking the eighth note groove or the 16th note groove we're going on with those sequences in the background there. Or with the hi-hats that I sat on the right side that are very, very gentle. It's nice to have that everything sort of drop out on the sorry part. Just having the two singers there showing what they can do with those legato passages and harmonies there. It's gorgeous. It's a great way to shake things up for the next verse. Or are we into the... Okay, no, that well, the extra synth on the high layer is welcome. It's nice to have uh, a little bit of English in there as well. As someone who predominantly speaks English, it helps me to sort of get a feel for the track. Again, we do have DPL with the translations after this, so I can kind of have a bit more of a go at it. But still, it's really pleasant. How does the song make me feel? We'll find out at the end, I suppose. Um, I really like the tone of those drums coming into the build and throughout it, but it almost like it's almost like we take away the the oomph of that that first beat kick there by the emphasis of the sorry in the vocals. I'm sure that's a production or studio decision. It's just a shame because it feels like we're almost trying to link the bridge together and the hook together. The hook seems to come strongly. Can you hear how like the crash seemed a little bit more sort of resonant than that kick part there? Again, it's a well-written track and I do like the way it sounds and I'm guessing it's going for a specific 
oral vibe. And then there's like a da da da, a little chromatic semitonal thing going on with the guitars on the left side there. That's a fun thing, way to transition between times of the chorus. Yeah, and great reverb chain there, the sorry rings out. Really pleasant to listen to. I've got no real complaints about either of their performances. Like, technically they're fantastic. So if you're wondering why I was saying will you for the song title, here you go. It's because Deep Owl translated it that way. So apologies if I have uh, misunderstood it. Stakes and return, don't give up. Say I do it, but you run away. I toss and turn, can't breathe. So I, sh I think that was um, how Faye started, is uh, don't give up, say I do. So is this giving up on love? Is it? Walking towards you, where are you going, leaving me behind? So are they both walking in opposite directions or are they mismatching each other along the path? The result is clear, I can't let go, but I still lie to myself. A thousand reasons are too late. I can't keep, damn. So really they realized they couldn't keep each other. Needed more than just memories. Don't let me wander alone no more. Damn, dude. Oh, not to be anyone's puppet. Oh, I get it. I, I get it. I don't care if I'm wrong or right, I'm sorry. So basically it's about, you know, maybe they had something there for a moment, but they didn't want to be manipulated anymore and they wanted to sort of step away from it. That would explain the grayscale with the video and everything like that. It's looking back and it wondering what the hell happened. Tell me, can I like you? Can I like you, like you? Oh, okay. I'm not going to be a puppet. I don't care if I'm wrong or right. Will you be sorry? Ah, okay. Will you be sorry that you treated me like this? Because this is effectively my conclusion of this CSP Patrons review of Gen Neo and Faye's uh, track titled by Deep L, uh, Will You. What do I think this track is about? What do I think this track is about? So after just confirming that for a minute, I've realized that the track title is Will You Won't You. So that's just the extension of that. That's the full title there, Will You Won't You. Just wanted to make sure that before I go any further, I'll put that in the title card for the review. The track itself, I think, is about someone figuring out whether or not they're going to have a future with their respective other or someone that they're interested in or infatuated with. They don't want to be thrown around by them. They don't want the uncertainty. They just want someone who's either ride or die. Or they want someone just to be honest about the fact that they're not going to actually be together for the long term. And I think this is a track that a lot of people will be able to relate to. A lot of people probably feel like they've been used by their respective partners or have been used by their respective partners and nobody likes being manipulated so i think there'll be an audience for a track like this the gen the, the, the teamwork of gen Yu and fei was fantastic you know they're a great team they work together great you know really well nice chemistry between them both are sensational vocalists in their own right slightly different styles um uh fei is a little bit more sort of ornamental and delicate whereas gen Neo's is a little bit sort of like um it was sort of more conservative, but he still has the chops to keep up with Faye, definitely. They're both great singers. And uh, I had a great, I had a fantastic time listening to both of them. It's interesting in the video, you can never see them together, which illustrates that potentially they're speaking from their own perspective within the, within the track, as if they see each other like that, as if there's two sides to the coin and your own perspective might be mirrored without you even being aware of it, you know? Because we don't, often if you don't have self-awareness, how can you possibly know how another person sees you? And the fact that they don't talk to each other, I mean, now the verses are them sort of speaking to each other and trying to get the idea. And at the end, when they come together for the, you know, I'm not a puppet, la la la, etc. You know, I, I, I think both of them, I just need to communicate. I think that's a typical thing in relationships as well. When you don't communicate, people get confused and they become upset. And I think this is what this track is talking about as well. Clearly, we have musicians here who are really comfortable. They are fantastically comfortable with their head and chest voice and they sound great together. They are, well, they're when each other, they've got their own sort of octave range, with their own vocal range where they stack well on top of each other. Was the rest of the arrangement, the, the motif behind it, of course, being really sort of soft and somber and sad sounding. Uh, it's, it's very um, delicate in parts, even when the synths and the basses come in and the first gen Nero parts and stuff like that, it never really feels like it's gonna amp up or become exciting. It's always kind of, you know, it's a little bit depressing. It's a little bit depressing to listen to this track, if I'm totally honest with you. 
Um, I don't think the subject matter is meant to be happy. I think it's a really, it's good for them not to be pandering to a crowd that might want a happy song to listen to or a bounce song to listen to, even if it's sad sounding, you know? Like it become sort of tonally disingenuous if you do that. So I'm glad that we didn't fall down that trap. You know, we had sort of simple to follow, sort of major and minor trides. There was some extensions on them. Whole notes played there apart from the 16th and 8th notes, sort of like sequences in the bass. The hi-hats were like simmering. They were nice and sort of gentle and they simmered there as well as like a sub element there. And they just kept the groove going, but it was a very slow tempo to it. And I think that it was meant to give a sense of sort of aura and space there while Jen No and Faye sang. The slow harmonies, even the la, 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 you know, that kind of stuff there that they were doing there, sang well on top of the rest of the chords in the mix. And, and ultimately, you know, there are very few other lead elements aside from the vocals. You know, there are occasional sort of like whole notes played there just to sort of ornament, you know, start of X amount of bars, but that's okay. You know, there's no issues with that. You know, there were no notes out of place. I think that at three and a half minutes, it's the right length. There's clear, sort of easy, simple structure to follow. The story was, um, it was nicely recorded as well. So like the story was easy to hear what was going on. The vocals had a great presence. There was enough space for the accompaniment to sort of shine to really kind of get a hang of it as well. Even if it wasn't a particularly cheery performance or sort of vibe or atmosphere that the song created. Ultimately, I think um, the production recording mixing mastering is very professional. As I mentioned, the recording being good before the vocal takes the, there was a great clarity of them. I know I mentioned some sort of like drive on there, but I think that might have been an effect on Jen Nero's vocals, or maybe they did a little bit of compression on it just to get a bit of sizzles there to sort of help them contrast to Faye. The other instruments like the pianos, the synths, the bass, the drums, etc., were nicely filtered, and there was a nice sort of like overall smoothness to them. You didn't want to sort of like punchy, stabby elements there. I know I complained a little bit about the clarity of the kick at the beginning part. But at the same time, I'm not tip I'm not upset about it. I, I think that uh, we've got to be realistic about it and understand that um, it's a it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing to uh, get a hook sounding nice and kind of. I mean, it's still recording. I've just had my headphones cut out now, so I don't even need them on. I suppose. Well, good timing getting the song done <laughs> before I finish the review. You know, the, the, the instruments were nicely stacked in the frequency spectrum. You know, they were nice and wide. There were no rev resonances in the, in the frequency. Did I say wide in the st frequency spectrum? I mean, they were nice and wide in the stereo field. And there were no weird resonances in the frequency spectrum. You know, the drums were side chained really well, despite the fact that I didn't think there was enough oomph there. But again, as I mentioned just before, I don't mind if it's like a, a kind of a somber kind of lowest kind of energy track to not have like a really sort of heavy kick there although there was nice dynamic range with the tom fills going into the choruses i mean like ultimately it was nice and loud without pumping it, the perceived loudness changes were great i think that was more due to the arrangement of taking away instruments and bringing them back ultimately uh i think this has been a it's, it's not a particularly happy or fun song to listen to you can see that both of these musicians are clearly in pain as they sing and it seems like it's very sort of authentically um organic to them like they, they they've been through that stuff themselves um and maybe this is the way of working through it but um well done to them anyways it doesn't have to be happy to be good this is effectively my sp patrons video of jen neo and phase will you want you hopefully enjoyed it if you did please do go show them some love via their various social medias and their youtube page stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as they need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and i'll catch you in the next sp patrons video spider hands up <laughs>